I recently got an email from my dear friend Mike Cohn, and I thought I'd share it with you. This one is interesting. This email is about doing spikes. Now, I have a preconceived bias towards spikes, but I'm not going to let that impact me reading this email and then going through and giving feedback. So, so let's see where Mike takes this. One of the more common mistakes that I see in teams, uh, or I see teams make, is relying too much on spikes. A spike is an activity a team performs to get smarter about something. With a spike, a team isn't trying to immediately deliver a new capability. Instead, they are building the knowledge that will allow them to deliver the new capability later. Okay, I like where he's taking it so far. Let's continue. Spikes are a great tool, and I'd expect every team to use them, but not on everything they work on. The best use of a spike is to reduce excess uncertainty. This could be uncertainty about how a feature should work or how it was built. A team may opt, for example, to spike the user interface for a particular feature, or it may use a spike to determine if a technical approach is feasible or will perform at a required level. Each of these can be a good use of a spike. The problem comes when a team wants to use a spike on everything. Spikes should only be used in cases of extreme or excessive amounts of uncertainty. Spikes should not be used to reduce the typical garden variety uncertainty that, that exists in all work. Okay, I'm going to pause here. This is exactly where I hoped you would go. What I found is that spikes are great. Spikes are amazing for research and to gather information when there's high, high levels of uncertainty. But when you're in an organization and every single story has a spike associated with it, or the majority of your stories do, that's usually an indicator that the team is trying to be spoon fed, which is a symptom. And that means that they've been burned before in the past for not delivering something in a way that it was supposed to exactly be created. So now they're asking for all the minutia of detail to get to where they need to be. And this is a concern because then it creates a low morale atmosphere where people are really not doing their jobs effectively. Things aren't going as planned. I mean, we can go down the list with you. But there's so many things that could go wrong if we don't use spikes correctly. He continues further. Spikes should not be used to eliminate uncertainty. Uh, teams need to be comfortable bringing work into their sprints or iterations with open issues remaining. And he's talking about the smaller level of uncertainty. Is your team reluctant to allow work into a sprint with any remaining uncertainty at all? That sometimes is a result of team members feeling excessive pressure to estimate perfectly to always achieve the sprint goal, or to always deliver everything that they brought into a sprint. So there it is. So the answer is, if we control whip and bring in the right amount of work into a sprint, and we don't put that unnecessary pressure on the team, we're going to yield better results. If that's happening, a scrum master coach needs to work with outside stakeholders or whomever is creating these unrealistic expectations. Sometimes it's even the team members putting this pressure on themselves. But what's the problem with frequent spikes anyway? It's that overuse of spikes extend your time to get to value. This is especially true when a spike is done in one iteration and the rest of the work is done in a different sprint. Overuse of spikes also reduces the extent to which teams overlap work. This can increase the burden on testing and on getting things right. For example, consider a case of a programmer who used a spike to reduce the uncertainty for a specific backlog item. If that item is brought into the next sprint, the programmer's work has been made simpler by the spike, but the tester's work has been made more difficult. If you find that certain testers are struggling to keep current with what your developers are doing, consider whether the team is doing too many spikes. It's a good question to ask yourself, even when testers don't seem overburdened, if your hope is to succeed with your projects and what you're doing. So what, what I can tell you is... The only gray area here I see, Mike, the only area that I see that I'm just kind of like, hmm, is I don't necessarily believe in a faction of separate testing from development. I believe that your developers and testers should be one. And that if you have people who aren't afraid to look into other people's codes and do peer review and, and, and do testing in that way, that you wind up with something that's more, not only more functional, but you wind up with something that has a higher probability of success. And I think that organizations are really starting to heavily lean in that way. And I think that while spikes are necessary, don't get me wrong, 
that they are abused and that what Mike's saying here is valid. So I think that what we need to do is measure what level of uncertainty this is, but more importantly, what impact does this uncertainty bring? If the uncertainty is something that really brings us to a crippling point where we can't continue, then yeah, spike's necessary for us to make sure we have the right data and information so that we can continue to press forward. If the spike is just to find out more or better details in order for us to get to a point where we can be successful as a team in delivering a single item in a sprint, that usually doesn't require a spike. That's usually just something the team needs to do in order to get a backlog item done. In fact, I could argue that almost every story has some level of detail that's not considered or unknown. So don't abuse spikes, keep them in, keep them in focus, keep them in scope, and everything about your agile will start to click. I love it. I love Mike, and I love that he brings these things into the realm. I appreciate receiving an email from him all the time. If you have a topic that you want to discuss, learn more at AgileDad.com. I'd love to hear from you. And as always, we encourage you to stay healthy, stay well, and stay agile, my friends. Until next time, do take care.